because some amazing kingdom transactions are happening and people are getting saved and set free and healed and, and transformed into who God wanted them to be. They're taking Saul's armor off of that fake identity and they're getting their slingshot and they're taking down giants. Sign me up. And then he says, instead, we focus on the things which we cannot see, which live on and on. The things that we cannot see live on and on. And, you know, Billy Graham was famous for saying he never saw a car, a hearse going to the uh, cemetery with a trailer behind it. You can't take it with you when you go. John Wesley apparently decided to give everything away before he died and died with just basically the clothes on his back because they had their hopes in a different city. They, they were planning on what was going to happen. This could be for any age, is that we understand. They live on and on. The things that we do for the Lord live on. It doesn't matter if other people know about it or not either. That's another important thing to remember is that you don't have to promote yourself. Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great people, men and women. Amen? So what about 1 Corinthians 10, our placement on God's timeline? This is another thing that the Jewish people were very, very aware of, but the heathen in some of these other cities like Ephesus and Corinth did not have the history of the Jewish people. The Jewish people followed the, the feasts. They, they had Sabbath every Friday night. They, they prayed together. They read scripture together. There was a, a complete community of the Jews, and it's a good thing, too, because they've been persecuted for all these thousands of years, and they're still standing. Amen? It's the power of, of the word of God and, and living their lives in obedience to him to the degree they are, right? Like, I can't pass judgment on that. But he says to the Corinthians now, who don't have the Jewish background, I want I wouldn't want you to be ignorant of our history, brothers and sisters. So he's talking to the Corinthians. I'm going to come over here. Just say hi to you folks over here. He's talking to the Corinthians who are heathen, right? They don't have any Jewish history. So he's calling them brothers and sisters. So when he says ours, he's including them in because you became part of the family. That's why they call each other brothers and sisters. And many of the families rejected the, the early Christians, so I, won't, I wouldn't want you to be ignorant of our history, brothers and sisters. Our ancestors were once safeguarded under a miraculous cloud in the wilderness and brought safely through the sea. Together they were sustained supernaturally. How about you? Have you been sustained supernaturally? Do you get manna from heaven in all kinds of different forms, right? Like there's no way I'm alive if I didn't get saved. Like right now, I would not be alive. I know that. So like I said, how do you get prideful about that? It's all house money, we used to say. <laughs> We're playing with house money. Every day's a gift because you shouldn't be here. Together they were sustained supernaturally. They all ate the same spiritual food, manna. Now if you're from Corinth, you're thinking, wow, okay, so God provided all the cloud in the wilderness, which, you know, would have kept them out of the sun and brought them safely through the sea, like miracle after miracle. And they were getting this food and manna. And then it says in verse 4, they all drank the same spiritual water flowing from a spiritual rock that was always with them. For the rock was Christ, the anointed one, our liberating king. And I thought of the bilocation term that we heard on Wednesday night. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we had a guest minister here. He, he did a great job, Chess. Chasden Strickland, you should go back and listen to that from Wednesday. He talked about bilocation. So Jesus was in heaven and on earth, right? And we are seated in heavenly places, and yet we're still living in this life that doesn't always feel so heavenly. <laughs> so the Corinthians are saying, wow, they had all this going for them. God was going before them, cloud by day, fire by night, manna every day, which I guess they got sick of. <laughs> Despite all of this, they were punished in the wilderness. Anybody remember why? Book of Exodus? Murmur. Isn't that a cool word? Murmur. It sounds like what it is, like murmur. Murmuring and complaining, man. He's not big on that, right? God is not big on murmuring and complaining. You don't get a lot of points for that one. And they were punished in the wilderness. And you might think about this, too. Like, for how long were they in slavery? Hundreds of years, right? At least 400 years, they were in slavery. And you develop a slave mindset. When you're captive, you stop thinking about being free. 
There's a lady named Yanmi Park that wrote a book about North Korea. She escaped, miraculously escaped. She said, I didn't know what freedom was. It wasn't a concept on the list that that would ever even be a choice. God was the president of, of their country. He was God. They were all dying. They were all starving. They had to eat grass in order, in order to live. Amazing, right? We don't realize how good we have it here. But see, they, even though they were getting the manna, then the manna wasn't good enough. Even though they had cloud by day, fire by night, it was part of that old mindset of being a captive. And I'm not trying to criticize anybody here, but we better take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And, and you have a choice every day to be grateful. Every day. Yes, you also have a choice to be really negative and think about what you don't have. That's what Adam and Eve did in the garden, just as a little reminder. There was only one tree they couldn't eat from. They had everything else available. And Satan convinced them, well, God's holding out on you. And Satan will try to attack God's character and the character of the person up in the pulpit. Yeah, well, they're not perfect. People in the pulpit aren't perfect. But... He'll do anything he can to keep you away from the truth and the power of the Holy Spirit. So it says, despite all of these blessings that they had, they were punished in the wilderness. And all these things, meaning the punishment for the lust and the idolatry and the complaining that they did, which you can go into. But those are all sins of the flesh, right? They were punished. All these things happened for a reason. Ironically, to sound a warning, they were written down and passed down to teach us. Hmm. So human nature doesn't really change, does it? They were written down and passed down to us to teach us. They were meant especially for us. He has to say it twice just to get their attention. Because the beginning of the end is happening in our time. Now there you go. There's another choice. You could either say, well, what are you waiting for? Get us out of here. Or you could say, hold on a little bit longer. I want to bring my neighbor to the baseball game this Friday night. I want to see him get saved. That's what Paul said. The love of God is what compels me to keep doing this. And if it's not love, then what is it? Build a bigger ministry, build a bigger 401k, all those things. Well, uh, you know, those things are important, but it can't be what's on the throne. Christ has to be on the throne. He doesn't want one person to perish, right? So they were meant especially for us because... The beginning of the end is happening in our time. And I don't know if you remember this, but I touched on it last week, these three stages, right? So the, the age of the flesh was after they sinned and before Jesus came. And then you see the between the times now where that red arrow is coming down. Not really, though, at the birth of Jesus. It was at the resurrection of Jesus when that really started. That's when the new covenant started because he defeated death, not by dying on the cross, but by coming out of the tomb. Death could not hold him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then a short time later, Holy Spirit gets poured out on all flesh, all because of the obedience of the Son. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live by the flesh, I live by the faith. or faithfulness. Is another translation, uh, translation, sorry, transaction on the brain here. I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God. He's my model. Yeah. Father, take it away from me if you can. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. That's the faithfulness of the Son of God. So you're going to be, God is going to challenge you to do some things that seem pretty outlandish. And you got to know yourself. you got to hear. But, I mean, there definitely is wisdom in a multitude of counselors, right? So you're surrounded by people who want you to flourish spiritually. So bring it out. Talk to people. This is what I feel like the Lord has prompted me to do. And wow, we would love to see that happen, right? That you find your calling and fulfill it. That's called flourishing in the spirit, right? So the beginning of the end times. So we're not, I'm not talking, you know, about the, the imminent return of Jesus. He said no man knows the day or the hour. And whether it was tomorrow or a month from now or 10 years from now, why should that have any difference on the way I live? If I want to be about the Father's business, whether he's coming back or not, should it matter? I should be still very urgent about getting the word out there to people. And it's not just about me. Man, it's this community of people that he brings. And then he brings new people into the community. And they get loved in. 
right? So it's the post-resurrection period that we're in, and then, then his final return comes. So that was last week's teaching. That's what the kingdom is about, that we're in this between the times. He resurrected, and he hasn't come back yet, and then he gave us his Holy Spirit, right? That's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is the now, but the final has not come yet. So we want to bring the not yet into the now. It's only about the fifth time I've said that, right? So what's in heaven is available to us now through Holy Spirit. What stops that is our flesh ruling us and trying to kick him off the throne of our heart. 